Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Senna for McDonald campus. Um, I would like to introduce the panelists we have today to welcome you to campus. Um, so we have Laura, <coughs> sorry, Laura Whitba, who's our coordinator for a hands-on graduate program. Uh, we have uh, Shannon Walsh, who's our uh, local wellness advisor. We have uh, Danielle Hodgins, who's in charge of our student services. She's the person to talk to because she knows absolutely everything in terms of student services. And uh, we have Mohamed Anta, who is the president of the uh, Graduate Student um, Society for the McDonald campus. We have student uh, panelists or representations from uh, the undergraduate students. So we have Arusha Fleming, who is here with her mother, Lisa McLeod, so that you can get um, some feedback from both sides of the coin. And we have Nick Dwarek, who is the past president of the uh, McDonald Campus Student Society. So thank you everyone for joining. And I, we will go on to a... Um, video from the Dean to welcome you all. Hello, it is wonderful to get an opportunity to greet you. My name is Anja Geitman and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences at McGill University. And just as if that weren't already a mouthful, I'm also the Associate Vice Principal of McDonald Campus, which you see here behind me. In other words, I'm one of the many people who are looking forward to meeting you. I speak on behalf of the entire faculty when I tell you that this year, more than any other year, we're so excited that you will be joining us for the fall semester. Some of you might already live in or around Montreal. For others, this way may mean moving to the city, which might actually mean that you have to leave your hometown or even your home country. Starting a new chapter in your life will be exciting, and you will soon realize that starting university is the best thing you can do with your life, whether there is a pandemic ongoing or not. It is important to realize that starting university is not only a crucial step in your education, of course, and for your career building, but it is also the single most exciting opportunity to build your network. You will meet new and interesting people among professors and staff, of course, but also, and probably even more importantly, among your peers, and you will find friendships that will last for a lifetime. So you might as well start out with that network building as soon as you get the opportunity and meet those who are in your class or in your program or with whom you live on the same floor in the residences. You will notice that McDonald campus is a very special place. It is part of a big world-class university, but it also provides the intimacy of a place where people know each other and where instructors recognize you and where you find the answers to questions just by knocking at somebody's door. McDonald campus also offers unique infrastructure ranging from a paddle shack right on the shore of Lac Saint-Louis to the farm and the Morgan Arboretum. It doesn't really get much better in terms of variety of outdoor space on the university campus. During the remainder of this event, um, you will meet a number of people who can speak about McDonald campus in much more detail. And I would like to thank those speakers for making themselves available to for talking to you. And I would like to finish by saying again, I and on behalf of the entire faculty, we're truly looking forward to meeting you this fall. So welcome back. Uh, we will have a few presentations about uh, the services offered on campus. So let me go and share my screen. Uh, sharing. And huh, what happened here? Okay, here, sharing show screen. Oops, sorry. Again, uh, let's go here. There we go. So let me again welcome you to my, the McDonald campus. We have a gorgeous campus on the western tip of the island of Montreal. And McGill University is located on land which has long served as a site of meaning and exchange among indigenous people, including the Odenoshan, Nasi, and Anishinaabe nations. So we would like to acknowledge and thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose presence marks this territory where we gather. So McDonald campus is um, a number of different 
um, departments that cover a variety of fields in the agriculture, food and environment domain. Uh, we also have the School of Human Nutrition, uh, the Bieler School of Environment and the uh, Institute of Parasitology. The campus um, shares space with a college, so um, grade 12 and 13, which is called John Abbott College. So there is quite the vitality in the youth present on our campus. For McDonald campus, we have about 1,300 undergraduate students and about 700 graduate students. So we're a good number uh, on a very beautiful campus. So here's another image of our beautiful campus. Um, and uh, we, or we welcome on our campus people coming from all over. So for the undergraduate graduate, we have quite a mix of where you come from. So from all, all over North America, but also the rest of the world. We do have representations from many countries. So we're a very um, diverse campus, which uh, makes it a lot of fun for exchanging on a variety of different cultures or different habits. Um, so here are some pictures for the campus when there's a lot of people on campus, which is not necessarily what we saw last year. Uh, however, we do hope that we will be coming back to in person, mostly in person in the fall term. We are working very hard to ensure that you will have a hands-on in-person experience come September 1st when your first courses start. Uh, we would like to remind you that there is a good number of, of resources that are made available to you um, for whatever the challenges may be when September comes. Um, you might still have some of your courses that have um, uh, remote lectures, uh, but all of your hands-on laboratories will be in person. So you may have a, a mixed mode of delivery for your, for your courses. So you may need to um, seek some support in terms of, of getting ready. So do not hesitate to visit the um, involvement.mcgill.ca site in order to see what those available resources are um, for you to take advantage to make sure you're ready for when the fall um, term starts. Um, so I'm the Associate Dean of um, Student Affairs and my office is in Lairdal, which is the standard residence for the McDonald campus. Um, and our office is on the first floor and this is where you would come to get your uh, McGill ID process. So we welcome you and we will be there in person to welcome you when you come to campus. Um, you are reminded that uh, you may need to inform yourself about your program and its requirements. So we do invite all students to make sure they check their, um, their program on the McGill eCalendar to um, take ownership of, of the required course that they will need to take and the flexibility in the courses they can take throughout the program. And in doing so, we invite all students to uh, contact their academic advisor. So every program in our faculty has a, an academic advisor that can help every student decide on the courses they're going to take and the sequence that they will follow in order um, to successfully complete their program. I now invite uh, Laura Whitball to give you a few words about um, the opportunities for graduate students. All right, thank you very much, Professor Orsat. Hello, everyone, and welcome to all our new McDonald campus graduate students. To begin with, I wanna mention that we in graduate studies are very excited that this fall we will be returning to in-person offerings at McGill after the last year and a half of being uh, functioning in a mostly remote capacity. So we're really looking forward to joining you uh, once again on campus and uh, glad that you'll be having the opportunity to work in your research labs uh, actively much more than last year. Uh, as a grad student in our faculty, you'll have opportunities to participate in unique and engaging interdisciplinary research in key areas of food, nutrition, agriculture, and the environment. Uh, you'll receive ongoing academic support from your thesis supervisor or program advisor, 
your graduate program director, as well as our faculty's associate dean of graduate education and the faculty of graduate and postdoctoral studies. So you see there will be many people here to support you. And I myself am here today uh, representing the team at the McDonald Office of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies. Uh, as your graduate program coordinators, we'll be here with you from your time of admission. So we've been in touch with many of you already during the admissions process. Uh, and we will help you along on your journey um, until the time you graduate from your program. So essentially, we're glad to be your first point of contact uh, to direct you if you have a question at any time in your program. And you can reach us through email for now, but we're looking forward to greeting you in person on campus uh, this coming September. So very important when starting graduate school, uh, you need to know that you have a, a comprehensive support system in place uh, for your personal health, success, and well-being. And this will be, uh, as already mentioned by Professor Orsat, uh, offered by the suite of McDonald Student Services. And you will learn more, much more about this uh, just following uh, in this presentation. Some skills you'll be able to uh, develop during your graduate program uh, will include writing, presenting, teaching, technology, and leadership. And some examples of McGill's offerings for grad students include research and teaching assistantships, our Graphos writing program, our three MT or three minute thesis competitions, and graduate teaching workshops, and many more. So at McDonald campus, you'll also have the chance to explore, explore a vast and beautiful campus as Professor Orsat has mentioned, because it really is true, we do have an outstandingly beautiful uh, setting out at our campus uh, on the shores of the St. Lawrence River. Um, it offers unique research facilities, uh, both indoor and outdoor, including uh, the McDonald Farm and Morgan Arboretum, as already mentioned, and among others. Uh, we also have uh, recreational facilities open to our students, uh, such as McDonald Athletics. Uh, we have an outdoor gym and Paddle Mac, which is our unique uh, paddling club. So once again, we are very happy that our students will be able to come onto campus and benefit from all these really, really cool things. I think they're cool. So um, you will also have, as mentioned, opportunities that you should really take to connect with other students on campus, whether in your lab or uh, in clubs, associations, uh, sports teams. Um, you can expect these student groups to reach out to you as well uh, so that you can participate and connect with them and become part of the community. Um, they hold many interesting activities and excursions throughout the year. The McDonald Campus Graduate Student Society in particular is looking forward to welcoming our new grad students uh, at the upcoming graduate orientation at the end of August. So uh, look out for these events and activities on our office webpage, so McDonald Graduate Orientation. Um, as well as checking out the uh, MCGSS um, grad uh, webpage, and, and they have a face, uh, Facebook page as well. So um, you will have opportunities to show leadership at McDonald campus through involvement in student groups, as well as representing your fellow grad students on committees at the department, faculty, and university levels. And you can even start your own student group um, and pursue causes near and dear to your own heart. So there's a lot of flexibility and opportunities for you. Uh, but the best thing uh, about being at MAC, as we uh, lovingly call it, is uh, being part of our close-knit, uh, very multicultural and dynamic community, um, and still being a part of the larger McGill University community. So you have access to a, an historic urban campus in downtown Montreal and MAC campus in its beautiful natural setting in the west of the island of Montreal. So you really get the best of both worlds. So with that, I thank you. And we once again, we really look forward to having all our grad students back on campus this coming September and welcoming you into the graduate community. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues in student services now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. There we go. Right, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> sorry, everyone. There we go. So, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Just getting organized here, guys. Um, so, okay, why isn't this minimizing? 
I will just push it aside. Sorry. So hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Danielle. Um, welcome. Welcome to McGill. Welcome to the McDonald family. Um, on behalf of, you know, all the student services team, I really want to extend that warm welcome to you. Um, so in student services, um, we're really here to help you make the most of your McGill experience. Um, by offering different services and supports uh, that promote your success and your well-being during your time at McGill. Um, and we're generally accessible on both campuses, so that could be downtown or um, uh, McDonald campus or, of course, remotely. Um, uh, we've had to shift to a lot more virtual uh, offerings, obviously, over the last year, but as we approach the fall, we're gearing up for more uh, in-person activities, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and we hope to connect with you, you know, in, in your first year as you transition to help you transition into McGill. Um, but really, whether it's your first year, your fourth year, or anywhere in between, um, we're here for you. Um, and so for many of you, um, you know, this might be your first time living away from home. Um, you might be thinking about working. Um, you might be budgeting your expenses or trying to figure out how to balance, you know, studying with classes and a social life. And there's really a lot of uh, a lot of new experiences for you to navigate. And so we really have um, services that are dedicated to helping you in each of these areas. So that could mean um, financial help. Uh, it could be help looking for a job. Um, if you have a learning disability or an impairment, we have supports available for that. Um, we have supports for Indigenous students. Um, we offer physical and mental health care through our student wellness hub. Um, so really, we take a holistic approach to supporting your well-being. Um, and on the topic of healthcare, actually, I should just mention one question I get frequently from both uh, parents and students alike is, um, what happens if I get sick? Or what if my kid is sick? And what a valid question. So um, obviously, we have you know security first responders on campus, but we also have clinics on both our campuses, so McDonald and downtown. Um, we're happy to refer students to off-campus clinics as well, and we have a local hospital. Um, and insurance is another big thing uh, to navigate. So whether you're an international student or coming from another Canadian province, um, whatever your situation, we can help you navigate the whole insurance process as well. Um, and so we're also here in general at Student Services to help you build connections. And, you know, especially in the context of emerging from this pandemic, it can be especially challenging um, to feel connected to your peers and to your community. Um, so we're here to, you know, perhaps connect you with um, your faith community or uh, your cohort or uh, keep you up to date on cultural events. Um, really, there's a lot of things we can help with there. And the idea is that we're here to help you uh, build a network of support, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and I'm just going to switch on. Why isn't it changing? Sorry. Um, so before you come to campus, I would really urge you um, to connect with us. Our uh, websites house a ton of information and resources. Um, you can find us at mcgill.ca slash student services. And um, we have McDonald campus specific information housed at mcgill.ca slash McDonald dash student services. And of course, our student wellness hub, uh, mcgill.ca slash wellness dash hub. Um, and uh, I would also encourage you to check us out at McGill Stew Serve. Um, follow us on Instagram. We post a ton of tips and ti with timely information throughout the year. Um, and so all that being said, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. And with that, I will pass it over to my colleague Shannon Walsh from the Student Wellness Hub. Great, thank you so much, Danielle. Um, welcome, you're hearing lots of welcomes today, uh, maybe feeling some of our excitement as we uh, are heading back to campus and um, welcoming new cohort of students. Um, I'm the local wellness advisor for Mac campus. Um, local wellness advisors are mental health professionals embedded within the faculty uh, there to support students uh, where they live and learn. Uh, so it's just one other uh, kind of point of entry. Students will often see me to uh, create a wellness plan for the semester. Uh, you do have to be in the province uh, to book your first appointment with me. But if you're not yet in the province, I did want to point out that there are lots of things going on um, virtually this summer. Uh, we have workshops, support groups that are open to students who are newly admitted and interested in starting to connect with other students. 
um, and maybe learn a thing or two. So uh, I'm offering a workshop next week on managing stress uh, in uncertain times. Uh, this is a workshop that we give pretty regularly and it creates lots of great discussion. Uh, you can find out more about that workshop and others um, at that Student Wellness Hub link that Danielle shared in the last uh, slide. Um, also, just to mention, like to look out for opportunities to attend wellness events. Uh, there will be Mac specific events where I will host things in person. I love to co collaborate with our um, student associations. We have some of those folks on this call. Um, so look out for opportunities to come and talk about how to be well and how to really have a successful um, time at McGill you know, of course, academically, but uh, holistically, as Danielle pointed to, we really want to ensure that um, the transition is good for you and that your experience is a good one. A um, couple of things just to mention, um, the Student Wellness Hub page will have information about the workshops, as I mentioned, and there are several. Um, also, uh, support. We offer a bi-weekly pandemic drop-in support uh, all summer long. Uh, we may continue it in the fall if people are interested. And that's basically an opportunity to come and talk about how are you doing? You know, how has the pandemic been for you and how are you coping? And um, a chance to meet other folks. And the other thing is that we do have an on-demand section on that Student Wellness Hub where there are tons of um, workshops that are pre-recorded uh, on topics that are of interest, like managing test stress, um, procrastination is another workshop. I'm not sure if that one's recorded, but the uh, accessing healthcare is a very popular one for our new students. And that one is actually on, uh, on demand on the website. So, um, anything that you hear today, if you have more questions, I look forward to meeting you in person and of course virtually as we move forward. And every door is the right door. You're going to hear us say that a lot. It's really true. We're a very tight-knit community um, and very well connected to the broader community. So if we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. So I'm going to invite back um, Professor Orsat and also Laura uh, to talk about, uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you, Shannon. There's actually a question that came in for you. Um, are there therapy or psychology services offered for Mac students? Yes, uh, so we like to say that MAC has its own student wellness hub uh, in Centennial Center, which is the physical building where a lot of the services are offered. My office is actually where Professor Orsat is uh, in Laird Hall, and that was very intentional. They wanted to put me right where a lot of our students live. Um, so yes, uh, there are services, myself being one of the mental health professionals. We also have a counselor at MAC campus. We have a doctor that visits our campus a nurse, a dietitian, um, so all of the mental health, physical health services that a student would find downtown, they would also find at MAC. Um, of course, we're transitioning back, so a lot of stuff is still pretty much, you know, virtual, at least for a first appointment, um, but there will very soon be opportunities for in-person meetings if you're in the province. Thank you very much. Um, there was a question for ID appointments. So because of the pandemic, ID cards for McGill students were uh, processed by appointment. And we have opened uh, appointment slots more or less depending on demand. Now because of summer, we only do one and or one and a half day per week that we're open. Uh, but, and we haven't opened the uh, ID appointments for the fall. Um, we will probably open them in about two weeks so that uh, August will be open for students to come. Um, so need not worry for the students that are worried about their ID cards. There will be plenty of appointments to make sure everybody gets their ID card. And the ID card is, is important to um, take the shuttle and, and take advantage of many of our services. So do not worry. Every student that needs one will get one. Um, I will go and uh, have... Uh, our panelists to introduce themselves. So I'll have uh, Nick, and maybe you can say a few words about your experiences on campus so that we can uh, invite some questions. Nick? Yeah, definitely. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Nick Warwick, and I was current, I mean, 
I've been super involved in uh, in, in the McDonald Campus Student Society. I was last year's previous president. I mean, I was the previous president of McDonald Campus Student Society. I'm still involved in it, but my experiences on campus have been quite positive. You know, I love the student society that I get to be a part of. I love contributing to you know the student life and you know sort of contributing to the students in general. Um, and I will say I haven't been involved in too many clubs. So, uh, but I know that Arusha has, in terms of questions, I know Arusha is going to be able to answer a lot more of those. Um, but in, in terms of anything on the realm of like, you know, student student life and anything um, with the student society, I, I know I can answer that kind of stuff. Perfect, thank you, Nick. Um, so maybe I'll invite Arusha to say a few words, maybe about your program and your own experiences. Okay, so yes, hi, I'm Arusha. I'm here with my mom today on the call. And so I am in my final year of food science. And so because of that, I've been really involved in the Food Science Association on campus, so there's an association for most of the majors on campus. I've also been part of um, Out of Garden Project. That was one that was pre-pandemic, so it was a student-led kitchen that students could volunteer for and prepare food for other students on campus. I've also been involved in Let's Talk Science, which is relatively new to Mac campus but that's a science outreach program for um, student volunteers to go to local schools in the community and connect with them and to present um, like scientific topics from kindergarten to high school students, which is a really nice program. Good, thank you, Arusha. Maybe I'll invite your mother to say a few words about her perspective as a mother of a McGill student. Well, uh, hello, my name's Lise, and uh, I am a proud mom of two McGill students, in fact. So Arusha, who's at Mac campus, and then her younger sister just finished her first year at the main campus. So we have uh, had, we're, we're a McGill family, and um, uh, yeah, lots of perspectives. We're Canadians from abroad, so I'm joining you from France, for my, this is my evening. And um, so um, really pleased to be able to um, share my thoughts on Mac because that's uh, not just because it was our, our, our first journey, but also um, have a, a particular fondness for the campus and, and for the experiences that Arusha's had there. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. And um, Mohamed, do you want to say a few words about your experience within the graduate student cohort? Maybe say a few words? Oh. It worked earlier. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. No, still nothing. Okay, um, then I'll proceed to uh, having a few questions. Um, oh, um, did you try without the headphones? Yeah. Oh, oh no, me no. <laughs> it's okay. Ah, it's okay. Um, so maybe I'll 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 introduce a question um, for for Frosh or I know. Um, a lot of students would like to have in-person frosh, but uh, right now it's going to be virtual frosh still uh, as of today because of limitations because of COVID-19. Um, that doesn't mean there won't be an introduction to your classmates, to your um, incoming class program uh, peers, and because your courses will be in person. So for sure, FRASH itself will be virtual, but orientation, there will be in-person opportunities for all of the students. Oh, do we get Mohamed working now? Mohamed, do you want to say a few words? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. So please uh, give us a okay. few words about your uh, experience. Problem. Okay. Yeah. So hello everyone. I am Mohammed Anter, PhD student, uh, the Department of Plant Science. I'm in fourth year uh, in my program. So I involved in McDonald Campus Graduate Society in the past two years as a, a graduate student representative at the faculty. 
So I could represent graduate students in different committees, departmental level committees, and also the faculty uh, committees, including graduate studies and uh, uh, EDI, uh, EDI committees. So, and this year, so I'll serve as a president of the society. So yeah, the, my participation uh, in the society. So I enjoyed like participation as uh, we could do a lot of things uh, in the, like uh, in terms of the social events and also uh, support to our students uh, at, at my campus. So and this year, last year we were a bit uh, slow because due to the pandemic we couldn't organize uh, events. Uh, but still, we uh, we organized some online events. But this year we are looking forward uh, for like in, into organizing uh, in-person events starting from uh, orientation end of August and until end of the, of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, uh, questions that often come and come again. It's uh, opportunities to do sports to be. Uh, Know, active. So, any comments from uh, your students? Maybe Nick, any comments or Arusha on the sports potential on campus? I, well, I know both of us can. Um, I know that there is, there's, you I know, mean, we have a gym on campus. I'm not sure exactly the how it's going to be operating this year, but typically in a normal year, which I think that this year is going to be more normal than the last two, probably. Um, we have intramural soccer, we have intramural volleyball. Um, and really, if you can get enough people together, you can really do any sport. Um, so it's sort of what you make of it. Um, but those intramural, the soccer and volleyball are the most popular ones. Like they're, they're like, I think like 10 plus teams from, you know, for each of the events and they'll, they'll sort of sometimes even have like tournaments and whatnot. So it's, it's super, it's a great way to make friends as well. Like Arusha can speak on behalf of that as well. Yeah, I really enjoyed um, my intramural volleyball experience. I uh, did it my first year here. And what I really liked about it was that in high school, it was really, really competitive and it was always trying to be like best in your area. And so oftentimes, because I'm not great at the sport, you know, I was benched a lot. But then because it's Mac and it's such an open, welcoming campus and it's intramural, so no one cares. You just get to do whatever you want. And it's just about the fun of being active and fit and just getting to play sport with your friends. And then there's also a um, varsity woodsman team at Mac. I'm not sure if it's going to be happening this upcoming year, but in the past, it's been really fun to watch the tournaments and to watch Mac students get involved in that as well. And so it's um, competitive like lumberjack activities in the harsh winter of Canada and it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And I must point out that during the pandemic we tried to maintain some level of athletics open following the regulations imposed by the government but uh, they we had um, a badminton because it was a singular uh, sports so that we can maintain the palace open for badminton so that was good so i know a lot of grad students took advantage of that because on campus uh, there was a lot of grad students through the winter uh, or through the fall and winter and had to, needed to do something uh, we also maintain for a while the arena open so that people can go do some free skating as well some activities um, we even offered to our students living in St. Anne's to go play curling if they wanted. That, that was an initiative of our Associate Dean of uh, Graduate Studies, who's a, a member of the curling club in Bay Durfe, so that students who wanted to just get out of their dorm room uh, during the pandemic could do so. So we are very aware that often the uh, athletics activities go hand in hand with uh, the mental wellness. Hey, Shannon, it's very, very important to be able to go let loose in a uh, physical activity. So we are careful of that. Um, I have a question here uh, for posting textbooks. So a, stu a student wants to know if uh, the requirement for textbooks can be made aware ahead of time. Um, it depends, every instructor will decide if, if it's like that known. 
Uh, but my courses, if you're registered in the course that you're going to be taking in the fall, my courses is already open. So if you access my courses, some professors will have put their course outline and in the course outline there will be the text requirement. But maybe not. Not every prof is as quick as uh, they can be. Um, so if you really want to know, feel free to email your course instructor uh, and ask them. Uh, because yes, books can be expensive and finding them on Amazon or other sources uh, can, be, can, can be good as well. Uh, Nick, you wanted to comment on that? Yeah. So, so on behalf of, on, on, the, on the topic of textbooks, there's a lot of Facebook groups throughout uh, Montreal that are is a great place to get good, cheap textbooks. Um, even even I, I actually bought all my first year textbooks from a frosh leader. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, let's sort of keep your eyes open on that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of the Facebook groups, it's gonna be like Mac free and for sale. There are free and for sale groups on Facebook. Um, and you can either find posts with people selling the textbook, or you can even put like, you know, post, uh, you know, post something saying, I'm looking for these textbooks and someone always has it. Um, it's a great way to get cheap textbooks. Mm -hmm. um, I know the bookstore has had the uh, return books in the past. Too. Do you know if they're going to be doing that again? I'm not sure. Yeah, so, well, MCSS no longer is in charge of the bookstore, but it's through LeJames now. And LeJames is going to have every one of the textbooks that you need as well. So if, you know, if you want to buy a completely new textbook, because you just, some, some, some sometimes the textbooks are just, you know, unusable. Um, but that's another good place to get textbooks and supplies. And that's going to be actually in the CC. So that's a good place to, you know, get school supplies and that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and McGill merch as well. <laughs> True, true. Mohamed, you wanted to uh, say something I to that effect? Yeah, Le James, they have the used books, so, and I'm sure like they have a lot of textbooks and the, the, the price quite like affordable comparing to the new textbook. And also McGill official application, there's a section for the, for the textbooks as well, so mm -hmm. you can call that application. Yeah. Good, thank you. Um, I have a question here, perhaps for students. Are there any music-related activities on the Mac campus? Okay, so yes, there is. There's a music club on campus. Hopefully, it's still going to keep going next semester. But yeah, so basically, I'd say it's about once a month for a couple times a semester, there will be a big music show, which a lot of students from Mac come to go watch. And so anyone who wants to be involved can. You can make some friends that way. You can join a band. And then there's also a regular music club where they just meet up if you want to practice and get used to some instruments on campus as well. Good, thank you. I know I've heard them play at the music club and then some of them are really, really good. So it's worth if you are a passionate musician to become a member of that club, you'll have some fun and you'll get opportunities to partake. Um, we actually hired some of them for the scholarship uh, event last fall because it was on Zoom. We wanted to make sure Zoom would be a little uh, nicer than just seeing squares and uh, so they played some music for us. It was really, really nice. Um, I have a question for Lise. Um, in terms of um, sending your child away so far, what were your worries? If you had any, um, or what, what, would, what would you well, recommend to somebody who has worries? Uh, um, there will always be worries. I think that's a parent's job. Uh, I felt good. We felt good sending them to Montreal, Canada, of all of all the the places that they could have chosen. I think that is um, that that region is just a fabulous place to um, you know st spread your wings a little bit and. Um, I, I would like to take this opportunity, if you haven't already found it, to join the McGill Parents uh, Facebook group, McGill Parents International Facebook group. There is some duplication, but each covers um, the relevant issues. And you, all those things that you're thinking of or you're concerned about or, or, or worried about tends to come up in in the chats 
and or it has come up in the past and you can search for it. So um, a, a conversation that's happening at home right now, both girls are looking to get their driver's licenses. And then of course, the next uh, thought would be, what about getting a car? And it was a chat in the, the last week or so. And people chime in from all over the place and everything from parking to insurance, from Canadian, so uh, Quebec or from other provinces, US students, um, international students, near graduation students. It, it was all there and it was literally a, a pros and cons without ever having to do one ounce of work. So Rusha will be we'll be talking about this. So um, the um, other other worries, even we're, we're both, uh, their, their dad and I are, we're both Canadian, but we left a while ago. So of course you think of things like weather and all, you know, wh how, what about their clothes? What about this? What about that? First of all, it's, um, you can get everything you need there. It's um, it's a, a rural environment, but the, um, the stores are close by. There's lots of, um, I remember arriving at Laird and I, I may, maybe this coming year will be different, but there were articles from former students. So the pots, the cups, the all that kind of thing. Um, bedding, all, I mean, really the, the worries, um, the, the frosh was another thing that came up in my mind, but also to see um, the from Arusha was part of the organization last year, as I as I know Nick was. So seeing it from a participant's point of view, but also an organizer's point of view, because you you know you're handing them over to this institution and it's this community, and um, no, it uh, yeah I won't you don't have anything to worry about the the. There are so many aspects of of the the package that that are there. Should your student need assistance or support? Thank you. That that was very nice. Yes, we, we try to nurture them once they are with us. So we we have their their well being at heart for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I have a questions for the students for the intramural teams. A student wants to know how complicated is it to be part of those intramural teams? Is it organized by programs or is it just a fac faculty thing? It's definitely a faculty thing. I found out about it because um, I was in res and a bunch of students were like, hey, we're going to volleyball tonight. And so I think I had to sign up on the Mac Athletics webpage to do it. But I'm sure if you want to get involved, you could inquire with the Mac Athletics Sports Center or there's probably other ways to find out about it. But it's really easy to join if you want to. They will put you on a team. You can make new friends on a team. And I suppose there's probably some recruiting as well that occurs, maybe from athletics itself, especially I can foresee that because we were a year kind of away that there's going to be a little bit more of a, a face centered trying to recruit people just to get things back into a certain momentum. Right. So I think there's going to be great opportunities for those students to uh, be members of those teams. Yeah. So. In the beginning of each semester, we have the meet and greet, like a uh, student, they come to the court. So, and then there, uh, they they got new to uh, each other and then they choose the team. So the, the, the special thing about this, so I really like it that undergrads and graduate students, they can play the same team. So it's not like specific team for undergrads and this is just graduate. Yeah, we had like team for that, but mostly we had mixed teams with grad, graduates and uh, undergrads. So in the, the, in the introductory game, the first game, so usually more than 20, 25 uh, students like show up and they choose the teams and the rest, they will decide the, while they are uh, on the complex. Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent point. It's true. Uh, with mingling both graduate and undergraduate, you're, you're 
encouraging more of uh, making new friends but you're also reaching that critical mass of having enough people that come and play right which is really really good um on the volleyball we also have an exterior volleyball court it's not just indoor volleyball it's also beach volleyball and it's a very nice court so I, if uh, if some are wanting to get dirty because usually you get quite dirty on that set man <laughs> it's sometimes fun right um, I have a question here for uh, French speaking. The, does anyone uh, feel that the, there's there's opportunity for French speaking on, on the campus? And uh, has anyone taken advantage of that from the student perspective? Arusha? <laughs> um, definitely, just because there's uh, quite a few um, like francophone or french speaking students that are there if you want to make the effort you can definitely like say i want to speak to you in this language apart from that i know that downtown offers many french speaking language classes for you to take that there i know that there's also quite a few um like um outside places you can go i'm pretty sure there's one in the west island that if you want to take an actual just french course not related to mcgill or anything not related to your grade you can do that as well there's also an explore program i'm not sure if that's still going on but it's this one where in the summer you can do an immersion uh somewhere in quebec with i think with a family i haven't done it myself but uh, you can do French speaking classes that way. But apart from that, I'd say the best thing I did for my French was um, actually get like, because I had a basic level, but getting a French speaking job in the area was definitely the best way to force yourself to practice it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, also PGSS offers uh, part time uh, evening courses for French. Uh, this is for graduate students. But the government of the Quebec government also offers the full-time and part-time uh, French courses. Like all students uh, with the CAQ or study permit, they can take uh, part-time uh, French courses. And usually evenings is from six to nine p.m. And some courses even in the yeah, it's mostly like evenings. But there are some options for the for the mornings as well. So this is another option, uh, which is totally free. Can I mention another option? Yeah, so um, McGill offers uh, French courses as well as uh, lectured three credit courses. And for graduate students, uh, international graduate students are able to take these French courses at the Quebec rate of tuition. So it's another chance for you to, uh, to learn French if you're international and coming to Canada. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you, Laura. Uh, some of the graduate students who uh, come for uh, the course-based course programs and there's an internship. Um, how does the internship go? Some of them get worried before coming. Will I be able to get that internship? So maybe you could say a few words about that, Laura. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so for our non-thesis programs, which have a research project or internship, uh, definitely that's a major part of the program. It usually happens in the last semester of your program, which is usually about one or one and a half years long. Um, the department uh, or the program advisor uh, for your program will uh, assist you in finding an internship or a research project. So um, students are not placed per se. Uh, students are expected, graduate students are expected to take the initiative to find themselves a project with a professor or an internship in industry or in another academic institution. However, we do give you the tools to try to find yourselves the internship or the research project. So there is support. We have meetings at the beginning of the year, halfway through the year, and we are available to support you um, in your search for an internship. So not to worry, every student will find a project or an internship. Thank you. I have a question for Shannon. Um, what if I'm quite stressed and anxious about all this? Uh, what resources, what should I do? Uh, should I, uh, help me. Well, um, first of all, I think 
stress is something that a lot of students are feeling coming back, even our returning students, right? And I see some nods from, you know, uh, Arusha here, and, and I'm sure Nick and Mohammed, you know, just the transition, even for students who've been on campus, maybe haven't had too much remote, um, but for new students, stress is definitely something that um, is worth talking about. So opportunities where you can come together with other folks and talk specifically about how can I deal with my stress, like the Managing Stress Workshop that's offered through the Student Wellness Hub. I, you know, that's one of the workshops that I offer. I co-facilitate it with the local wellness advisor from law. And um, it's really just one hour where we talk about tips and tricks and how can I manage my stress. And really, it's a chance to normalize um, that stress is part of life. And for some of us, and I'm going to speak for myself, it's something I have to be very mindful and intentional about managing. Um, so there are definitely opportunities to learn tools and to connect with others, but that's sometimes a really good reason just to book an appointment with your local wellness advisor and come in and say like, hey, I'm kind of stressed. I want a plan to kind of manage that as I get going. Um, so one of the things that I want to say is, you know, students consult with me not necessarily because they have some big issue or crisis and they need intervention. Very often they come because they're dealing with some extra stress or some anxiety and they really want um, to manage it as best they can. So once you're in the province, um, you know, maybe you already are, you can go ahead and book an appointment and just, there's an online, very easy link on that student wellness hub page. Uh, you'll see book with your local wellness advisor and then you'll select Mac campus and you'll see my schedule. You'll see when I'm available next. Uh, most of the time you don't have to wait more than a week or two to get to see me. So it's pretty quick. And I want to say on the parent note, because I, when we used to do parents tent in person, that will return, but I, I know it won't jet just yet. Um, parents would often say, well, what if my child had support before for stress or anxiety or some mental health concern? And they might be stressed about, you know, you're going off to university and will you have the right support? Um, you know, that was why the local wellness advisor rule was created, really just to kind of be that receiving person to try and connect you with resources, um, to come up with a plan for the semester and for you to be able to manage some of that. So check out the workshop on managing stress. I'm always excited to get people to join us, especially new recruits, because they get to meet other McGill students. Um, but also don't shy away from reaching out for support. Um, it's really, you know, I think you'll learn at Mac that I'm out and about in the community and I hope the students on this call will agree, um, you know, it's okay, come ask your questions, get the tools, um, yeah. Yes, thank you, Shannon. Yeah, it's a, it can be nerve wracking for first time students in a, the different environments. So it's important to know for them that there will be a network of, of, of support tools and systems. Um, I got a question from students that are wondering how much or what's the percentage that will actually be in person this fall term? And so that's a question for me. I don't actually have an answer per se. Uh, all I can say is that if your course has a lab or a tutorial, that will be in person for sure. If your class is only a lecture, it might start online and then go to in-person because it'll depend on the go at the time we get the go ahead from the government to have no distancing in classrooms. Currently we don't have that, so we're having difficulty in filling classrooms and meet the guidelines from um, uh, secure, uh, pu public health security. So we are, aiming to have as much in person as possible um, and uh, uh, we 
we want to make sure it's a safe environment that uh, everybody gets back to being with their peers and colleagues uh, for their programs, make new friends, and build their future careers in the programs that they want and have the full McGill experience, but we will need to make sure that uh, it will remain safe. Um, we have another question for can international students bring parents uh, to campus to help move in um, and i think the move in to Lairdal will allow one parent to go into Lairdal. last year we could not it was just the student that were allowed to go in uh, at that time we were on lockdown more or less uh, but now, yes, your parents can come with you. If you're doubly vaxxed and of Canadian origin uh, and you've been doubly vaxxed uh, since two weeks, you won't have to quarantine when you come. If you haven't been vaccinated, uh, then you'll have to quarantine and get a negative test in order to come before you'll be able to enter the residence. So, yes, there's possibility for that. Um, I think we're coming to the towards the end, so I should thank all of the panelists. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, participation in this, and uh, we shall post the slides and the video of this presentation uh, so that everyone can see it again if needed. Uh, feel free to send us questions. Um, and you can see the details to contact us on the PowerPoint. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to the panelists for participating and welcome again to all the students. We look forward to seeing you in person and to actually um, exchange with you uh, and nurture the years you will spend with us. Thank you very much, everyone. Born from a will, made here by dreamers and risk takers, by makers and big thinkers. Through trial and error, we face what's ahead, staying true to the voice that never fails us. Keep learning. We were made for this. Made by lamplight and late nights, by salut and goodbyes, by questioning everything and feeding our curiosity, by testing our resilience, by finding our limits. By pushing forward and by breaking through, by finding a new way, our own way. We're made where ideas are built and built upon, where we come together and we rise above. We are made by McGill.